Hey gang, it's Zippo. Uh, sorry I haven't made too many videos here recently. been trying to get some health issues resolved with, uh, to no avail. Um, but at any rate, as my leash is bothering me, my phone keeps going off. <laughs> um, my name is Zippo Varga. I'm going to explain Zippo Varga. Zippo, obviously, the lighter. Varga. Uh, was an artist who was famous for doing pinup girls in the 30s and 40s and George G. Blaisdell uh, and the marketing team that uh, was working for Zippo at the time um, got their heads together and tried to figure out a good uh, ad campaign and they came up with using the Varga girls uh, more specifically Wendy um, and some of you who are uh, lighter aficionados will know who Wendy is. Uh, she's uh, the gal that was uh, advertise was used for advertising the windproof Zippo lighter. Uh, she would, was standing trying to light a cigarette with the Zippo lighter lit and the flames licking back at her, and her dress blowing back behind her. Um, she uh, certainly helped George G. in. Uh, getting his Zippo lighters off the ground in the times of the Great Depression, uh, which is a feat in itself. Uh, kudos to his ability and his tenacity to get the lighters out there. Um, the very first lighters, uh, there's controversy, 32 or 33. The lighter was developed in 32. The lighter was not distributed until 1933. There were prototypes out there in 32. The prototypes were given to people, literally given to people, um, to get their input on them. Uh, once manufacturing started, um, they started out as brass tubes that had pieces of brass soldered on each end, a four barrel hinge welded, or soldered rather, to the outside of the casing, and a little dog bone inside the lighter. The dog bone would catch a hook inside the lighter. I'm going to show you here on this. This is a, uh, it's not too old. What is it? It's a VI. I'll explain how to uh, date your lighters here in a little bit too. If you look in here, down inside here there's a lip. And that lip right there works in conjunction with the dog bone. And the dog bones are on the zip lights too. So as you can see, when you close that, it's under spring tension. See how that does? That's what holds a Zippo lighter closed. It gets a hold of that lip in there and gives you the distinctive Zippo click. Not with the zip light, but it will with the uh, standard Zippo. Everyone's familiar with that sound, right? Okay. Uh, this one that you're looking at is a replica of a 1937. Um, they started with the hash lines and they also started doing a, an embellishment on the lighters. Uh, advertising and also putting, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and they also started putting, look, look at what my camera's doing, I'm not moving it at all, look what it's doing, it's finding itself, hello, isn't that weird, camera's not moving at all, obviously I have a setting screwed up, anyway, enough playing, um, the uh, 1937 actually was not flat on top, it had a little bit of a rounded uh, top and they started doing an applique called a metallique and what it was was very very thin slivers of brass that were stamped and they would be layered and then glass enamel would be filled in to the voids like for initials or for those that are Zippo aficionados the Kendall motor oil uh, the most coveted of the advertising early cap advertising Zippo lighters um, but anyway back to it, the hash marks uh, became trademark for the early Zippos and this is a, a close representation of what a 1937 Zippo would have looked like uh, the bottom's correct, it was not canned, when I say canned if you look at a late model Zippo it has a recess, it's canned just like a can of green beans or anything like that okay that's what I mean by canned okay? the, this would have been representative of an extruded case when they in 37, 36 they started going to the extruded case and they also went to an internal hinge uh, the internal hinge in 37 uh, 36 and 37 was a four barrel also um, all the way up uh, eh, 
I'm a little gray. It's been a while since I've messed with them, so I don't have the exact details. But uh, up through 1940, into the Vietnam era, there, there were still a considerable number of them out there uh, that still had four barrel hinges on them. Um, something also that's very distinctive of the older Zippos and the newer Zippos. Uh, when we're talking older and newer, I'm talking 30s, 40s, up to 70s, 60s and 70s when uh, the standard, uh, when the lighters became the norm. This is pretty much the standard now as far as a full-size Zippo. And then, of course, you've got your Slims. And you guys can probably predate that with ET on it and figure, hey, that's from back in the 1980s. You're exactly right. This is a Zippo Slim with four slashes on either side. Now, I don't remember the exact year, I believe it was 82 or 83. Um, but all of that can be found if you just go to Google Chrome or to Yahoo search engine or any of the good search engines out there and just type in Zippo date codes, you'll get a bunch of uh, uh, results back. And any of them are fairly reputable. You have to read through three or four of them to get a really good feel for who's right and who's wrong and what's hype and what's not hype. The marks on the bottom of a Zippo lighter are not representative of the value of the lighter, how rare the lighter is. It is a date code on all Zippo lighters. It's a date code, nothing more. It can tell you when your Zippo lighter was made. If it has an 08 on it on the right side and a a on the left side, the A, all they did was use alphanumerics for the months. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, January, February, March, April, May. That's the way that it worked all the way up through December. So you figure it out. If it has an A, it's a January. If it's a B, it's a February. That's your left side. Your right side's your actual ear, year. And that started in 2000 uh, with the titanium plated edition uh, that actually had the year 2000 on the lighter, stamped on the bottom of the lighter. Um, if you take a look at this one, is it upside down? No, it's right side. It might be kind of hard to read. We'll see if we can get it all in there, get it polished up. This is a replica of a 1940. You can see my fan going up in there. And this one was made in 2008, and it has a G. So go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. January, February, March, April, May, June, July. This lighter was made in July of 2008. It is a very good representation of a 1940 Zippo lighter. It has good square crisp edges on both sides. Very flat, not rounded like the extruded cases are. See how that's rounded? And compare here. See? Also, in 1937 they were just ever so slightly shorter and that correct representation is made here also with the 1940 replicas they did a very good job on the 1940 replica they really did their homework it also even comes with the four barrel introduction of the four barrel internal hinge and when I say four barrel and five barrel and all this kind of stuff what we're talking about is is if you count each of the different sections on the hinge like we look right here at uh, this late model and then this 1940 representation there is one two three four five pieces to the hinge three on top two on the bottom total five on the 1940 representation and a true 1937 in the earlier models there was even a three barrel that came out at one point in time it was made out of nickel silver and they were in the Vietnam era, I believe. Somebody will correct me if I'm wrong on my on my dates. Like I say, I'm a little rusty. It's been a little while since I've been into it. Um, but at any rate, uh, you got one, two, three, four. So you've got two on the top, two on the bottom, and a pin that goes through. Um, some other things about Zippo that's uh, kind of interesting as far as the history goes is they didn't uh, have their lighters perfected. They tried to do a number of different... Uh, lighters. An automatic lighter that as soon as you opened it, it lit, uh, uh, which is reminiscent of a Thorin's lighter, and I just happen to have one for an example all over here. here. This is a Thorin's tabletop lighter, and believe it or not, as good a shape as this thing in, it was made uh, in the late 1920s. This is a single lift arm automatic lighter, table lighter, made by Thorin's. One side here uh, has the felt that holds your um, fluid and then on the other side 
is storage for you to put your flints in and the way that this lighter operates and even the pocket lighters is there's a button on the side you depress that button and the lighter deploys when it deploys it pulls the, the strike wheel around you see these three pull or three pins and then a single arm a single pull that's the first introduction of this particular thorns lighter but enough on the history of the thorns lighter zippo tried to make some uh, representations of an automatic lighter and those are at the Zippo Case Museum located in Bradford, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm not sure if Mike is still there. He would be the one that would give the tours in the museum. And then Linda Meeban, uh, who I know fairly well uh, and, and had good encounters with when I met her, um, is, is also a very good resource for being able to go back and, and uh, ascertain true identities of Zippo lighters. Because there are a lot of fakes out there. And thank God YouTube has let us go past that 10 minute mark. Now I'm at 11 minutes and 4 seconds. But let me skip on through real quick. And uh, it was just a quick little brief history lesson. You guys can ask me questions. And um, if I don't have the answers, I can get a hold of some of my guys that do have the answers to a lot of these Zippo questions. Uh, most everything that's shown here uh, are just different representations of what was available. This is a Slim Scrimshaw. Zippo made money clips. Zippo made tape measures. Zippo made letter openers. Zippo made candle lighters. Zippo made table lighters. The Barcroft, the Lady Bar, or the Barcroft, the Lady Bradford. Um, uh, there's there's three or four different others also. Some of them are ultra rare. Uh, the Lady Bradford's one of the more rare. The older Barcrofts, the tall Barcrofts, with the very large inserts, those are pretty rare. Uh, this particular one's called the Handy Light. All it is, if you look, is just your regular basic Zippo. It's even still got its own date codes on the bottom of it. I've had this one for some time. And if you just look inside, all it has is just an Allen head screw that's been bolted down into this base. And it's a heavy base to keep the lighter, uh, bottom heavy to keep it from tipping over. And it's got a standard insert. And uh, typically this one sits up on my desk and I use this one uh, when I'm on the computer. Um, also, uh, Zippo has uh, obviously done a lot of advertising lighters. Uh, here's one for example, all of my gun guys. It's a lighter that was uh, picked up at the, uh, oh, I can't remember. It was in 2000, so it's XVI G A B C D E F G. So we've got another July, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Um, but it, it was, and I've, I've, uh, I've not used this one. This one was given to me by my uncle, who was a lifetime member. And uh, he went to uh, one of the summits and uh, picked up this lighter in 2000 before his uh, early, uh, early passing. Uh, but anyway, um, this is just a representation of the advertisements that uh, Zippo does. And also different artists uh, also came into play. Uh, this particular one is a Barrett Smythe, S-M-Y-T-H, I believe, uh, of a blue whale. He did a series. Uh, he did a bumblebee. Uh, there, there, there was a few of them. I had them all at one time. At one time, my collection uh, exceeded um, 500 Zippo lighters, uh, but hard times called for desperate measures, and I had to sell out. But I'm at 13 minutes and 54 seconds, so... Here we've got, uh, this is my very first Zippo lighter that I ever bought. Two, three hash marks on the left, two hash marks on the right. You guys can date that. I believe it dates it to 1983, 82 or 83. I have replaced the hinge pin myself three times. I have used and used and used and used and used this lighter. Uh, it, you can sort of see it down there. It says Zippo. It's got my name on it. I don't care who knows it. It's Sean Abraham Falls. So all of you guys that know me as Zippo, I've got a real name! Anyway, and a bunch of different ways to carry it. You've got different kinds of holsters you can carry them in. And different kinds of boxes that they came in. All different kinds of uh, information about them. So if you're interested in Zippo lighters, get a hold of me. Or just type in Zippo in your search engine and enjoy. 
Uh, it's a great hobby to be in, to be into. I think cutlery lover is is also a big Zippo guy. Zippo later, I'm out.